uh, last week with the running game working so well. What stood out to you? Like, why was it so successful? Uh, you know, I think just the guys up front, they played really well. You know, uh, um, anytime we could get our backs into the second level, I think good things will happen because of the talent that they have. Um, you know, and I think they, they took it upon themselves up front to really, you know, have a good – a uh, good understanding of what we're trying to do, um, understanding their defense, and then understanding their technique and kind of how to use that. And so just a combination of those things are really, um, uh, they, they really did a great job up front in all areas, I felt like. How would you assess the diversity of your run game in terms of what you can present? opposing defenses at this point in the season? I think it's huge. I think you, you look at that not only within the run game, but within the whole offense. You know, you try to be diverse. You try to um, be as balanced as possible in terms of not necessarily, hey, we have to run it this many times, throw it this many times, more so in terms of how we're attacking defenses. But the, but the run game specifically. But the run game specifically. The diversity of that just in and of itself. Yeah, it I think like that's. been throwing a lot of things. At no, yeah, I th and I think that's huge. I think uh, anytime you could kind of create, you know, schemes that you understand and you can execute, you know, without it being too much to where, you know, you're, you're not masters of anything, you know? So I think they're, they're all schemes that, that, uh, that we can execute. We have good understanding of while at the same time, whether it's just lying up stationary, motioning, shifting out of things, I think that's, that's a big advantage for us that creates hopefully issues for a defense. In mind, you, you know, I mean, obviously you spread them out and ran it great against mm -hmm. Chicago, light boxes, but I mean, really the last, as the season has gone on, you've done, you've had success with bringing bigger people in, mm -hmm. Bobby Hart, uh, you know, whether it's w whatever combination he's with, the New England game, you ran on them and 21 personnel, just mm -hmm. what do you think uh, that has done for you uh, having success out of 21? 21 with Bobby Hart, mm -hmm. bigger people. Um, I think it gives you an advantage to be able to, to be balanced in those situations, in those personnel groupings, you know? So um, anytime you could throw personnel groupings out there and give different looks, um, you know, whether it's a two back look or potentially even one back looks out of those same personnel groupings and, and be able to run it and throw it is a big advantage. So um, again, it's such a, a week to week, you know, uh, a week to week deal in terms of how we feel like is best to attack a defense. And, and I think that goes into it a lot as well. Um, you know, our, our job being, okay, well, let's look at it and see, let's not bang our head against a wall uh, because we want to throw two backs out there or 11 personnel. We want to get bigger. Or we want to we be lighter. You know, whatever it might be in order to attack a defense to give us an advantage, that's, that's what we're going to do. When you look at these explosive plays that we've seen James Cook able mm -hmm. to make and bust off lately, is, is this kind of what you guys envision the kind of weapon him being when you drafted him? Yeah, I think uh, obviously, you know, you, you you take a guy in the draft because, you know, you think he could help you win and you think, you know, he's a good a good player and, and James is no different than that, you know, and I think we were fortunate that he was around at the time when we were able to get him, um, you know, because he's a heck of a player who's, who's really kind of continue to get better and better and more and more comfortable, you know, and I, again, I think I've used it talked about before, but, you know, I, I really feel like now his rep count's building up to where it's like he's seen things and now he's reacting to things instead of thinking about things. So, you know, some runs where he might have been a step slow, you know, week one or two, you know, now he's he's seen it, he's got a better feel, and he's kind of hitting those things a little bit cleaner now. So he's done a great job, and, and he's really put himself, himself in position to have the success by working extremely hard to understand the playbook to where, as coaches, we have no problem having him in at any time. So it's a true credit to him and the hard work he's put into it. James, Devin had joked, but I think it was also kind of serious how hard he was trying to get him to 100 yards. Mm -hmm. What was your role in that? Like, if you can reward a guy, do you want to with something like that when obviously um, you're able to win already? I'm going to be perfectly honest. I didn't know where he was at. <laughs> I don't, you know, it's, uh, to be honest, they, they hand me a stat sheet and I just kind of put it down because like, I just, I don't, you know, you don't want to be in a critical moment of the game thinking about something that, you know, isn't strictly more so than like us trying to win a football game for me, you know, so it's, it's unfortunate at times where it's like, yeah, I wish I could have gotten him another yard. Um, but, you know, at the, at the end of the day, it's more, okay, you know, how are we going to attack a defense in order for us to have success and win a game? That's, that's really where, where my job I think is, is critical. And then if I can do things to kind of help those guys out, I'm always going to do that for sure. 
guys do. Pine Valley. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. You guys do such a good job about next man up and mm-hmm. plugging guys in at different spots and different position groups. But it seems like from the outside looking in, Mitch's role, you know, it just it, there's a lot more that goes into that. Like how much his communication with Josh and other mm-hmm. players along the offensive line. What is how much do things change getting him back this week, especially especially against a really good defensive line? Yeah, I mean, anytime, um, obviously having you know the guys behind Mitch that we do helps us to kind of um, you know hit the ground running whenever we do you know come in a situation where Mitch can't go. So having those guys is huge. But obviously, like, Mitch is kind of the glue that holds that that group together a lot of times, you know? I mean, he's the center. He's the one making the calls. Um, you know, he's kind of like, I think I've mentioned it before, like the dad of the group, you know? It's like things start getting silly. He's kind of the one who gives them that look. And, you know, it's like, so he, he's really, you know, he's that that figure in the room where I think a ton of people respect him. And, and you know, he's seen so much ball and has been, been around and been in our system so long. Um, and him and Josh have such a great feel that, you know, it's it's something where they're they're very rarely not on the same page, you know. So um, I think Josh has a lot of faith in him and, and all those guys. But obviously, just speaking of Mitch, he's got a lot of faith in him. And, and um, any time that he's in the middle there, you feel you feel good about it. There's so many plays where Josh, we can pinpoint during the season, like highlights and plays that he's made. It's harder for offensive linemen. Is there a play that comes to mind? You know, during the season where Mitch kind of did that a little bit. Uh, you know, I think I think anytime, you know, he gets out on the edge and, and you really see his athletic ability, you know, um, whether he's pulling and, and getting out on the edge and, and getting to the second level and those types of things, where it's like sometimes you take that stuff for granted, uh, you know, about like how impressive it is that a, a, a guy his size can move like that. I mean, it's it's fun to watch. You know, you just kind of uh, you kind of get in fan mode a little bit and just start watching. It's like, dang, that's pretty cool, you know. And then you appreciate those things that uh, that he can do, you know. And at the same time, you appreciate uh, that athletic ability, yet the physicality in which he can bring. So, you know, to answer your question, I don't know if one specific thing, but just some of those things where he's he's able to get to the edge and and you know get outside where you know and do some things and and really beat some runners downfield it is crazy impressive and then some little things uh you know uh, getting skinny and getting through holes to get to second levels to backers you know and and some of those athletic ability things that he can do has always been extremely impressive to me you mentioned not wanting stats to dictate the way you're going to call the offense but stefan noticeably has just not been at the level where we saw him earlier in the season what have your conversations been like with him to, to kind of not level him out, but to talk him through not being, the, you know, the, the super productive guy that he's been most no, of the year? No, yeah, I mean, obviously, I think, you know, you go through the course of games and whether there's certain things that dictate kind of how, how things are going. So, you know, obviously, you know, uh, uh, Steph is a guy who, um, you know, uh, he's a receiver who, who all receivers want want the ball and all receivers you know feel like they can help you win and that's true you know we've got a lot of guys um, within the system who can really help us and, and you want to be diverse in how you're attacking defense so that they can't just focus on one guy and then all of a sudden your offense is, is shut down so um, you know I think Steph knows that you know and, and uh, knows that we're, we're always going to make sure that, uh, you know, he's a part of our thought process. But at the same time, we've got to make sure, you know, we're, we're attacking defenses in order to win, you know, help us win games. So, um, uh, again, week to week, things, things happen and things change. But, um, you know, obviously, I think Steph knows, you know, kind of where we're at with him and, and, and how we feel about him and, um, you know, how we game plan. And, you know, we had some things last week that, you know, um, just didn't work out where they're designed to him, you know, unfortunately. So that's going to happen in the course of a week, and we just got to make sure we're doing a good job staying balanced, and, and that definitely includes Steph as well. Josh did mention after the game and then even, I think, yesterday was that there is a fine line, though, that he understands he needs to get Steph on the ball mm-hmm. while also not forcing yeah. it. What, how do you describe that fine line, and how do you talk through that with Josh and even Steph? I think there's there's two big things. For one, for Josh is you know trust in your eyes, trust what you see, and work your progressions. So I think that's that's one of the biggest things with him is you know you've got to trust what you see and, and out there because you know it's the, the the defense a lot of times is going to dictate 
certain things, you know, based off of coverages, you know. So um, I think that's 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 the one thing with him. And then also it's playing smart, not conservative football where, hey, if we've got an opportunity there, let's take it. If not, let's be smart about it and work our progressions and work through our reads. So I think that's the biggest thing. And then, you know, obviously um, I, I think Steph understands that. I mean, Steph – Steph wants to win games. You know, I mean, I think that's that's the biggest thing with him is, you know, he's he is as as passionate as anybody about winning football games. And I think he understands that in the big picture. And, um, you know, it's a long season and there's ebbs and flows and, and everything. And I think we go through the same thing that probably Cincinnati goes through with with their guys, you know, in, in terms of wanting to get certain guys the ball or, you know, uh, different teams around the league. So I think there's, there's always that balance and there's always that, uh, you know, um, fine line you walk to make sure you know you're uh you're doing what's right for for everybody including but especially your offense and, and your team as a whole we've seen how they've defended mahomes and they've probably done it better than most teams mm -hmm. have defended mahomes uh you know just uh how challenging do they think they they drop eight some you know they blitzed them on third downs a little this time mm -hmm. how, uh, do they make it tougher to trust what you see quickly mm -hmm. than some teams no, yeah. I mean, obviously they do a great job. I mean, they're they're very good on defense. And I think what when you look at it, they've got a bunch of guys who have been there for a long time, you know, and, and I think that experience helps them uh, in what they do and whether it's the disguise aspect, the uh, multiplicity aspect and kind of the different looks they try to give you. So like, they've got a bunch of guys who understand their system and understand, you know, kind of the ins and outs of it. So, um, you know, I think that that has a lot to do with the, the what they're able to do on defense so you know obviously it's a huge challenge for us um because they are uh, they do pose a lot of different problems and kind of dif the different things they do and at, at the end of the day it goes out to it comes down to us having to go out and make sure we're you know we're on top of our you know what we're calling and and we're executing josh is kind of leading you know leading the league or close to it in downfield throws mm -hmm. you're number one in the league on third downs mm -hmm. um how would you, what do you think of the way Josh has been able to quickly hit check downs mm -hmm. this year? Yeah, I think, um, I think he's really shown, you know, just an understanding of as he's grown, you know, uh, uh, on certain concepts. It's like, okay, if they're there, we've got this concept, which I know isn't great against this look. I'm going to come down and, and, you know, get it to our guys while they're still dropping and not able to rally as quickly, you know? So I think it's definitely a fine line to where you don't want to become check down Charlie and just, you know, drop back and just keep, you know, throwing check downs because you want to be... You're going to have to worry about that. No, you don't have to worry about that with Josh, you know, but uh, at the same time, you know, it's, it, it, it is a, a, a line that I think he's walking well, you know, in terms of uh, if he's gotten shots, taking them, but knowing and understanding the concept and, not a great look against it. Let me let me find the outlet. Get us into second and five, second and two, or at the way the the way those backs are are playing at times, giving us first downs on those things and keeping us ahead of the chains. That uh, Bears game was the closest Isaiah and Khalil have been in snaps all mm -hmm. season. Was that a product of being a bit more run heavy, or or what what went into some of that? Yeah, I think um, you know. Again, I think. You got a lot of the stuff we have is is you know tagged for certain guys on plays, so I think a lot of that's just dictated based off of um, you know kind of what we're calling in in order to attack the defense. If that makes sense, you know I don't think it was it was anything more specific than that. I think uh, obviously they're two guys that we've got a lot of faith in, and really you know any situation we could plug either one of those guys in, and you feel great about them executing. So. Um, I think part of that is just, you know, yeah, I think we were, we were in a situation where weather dictated some of those stuff to maybe elevate one guy's snap based off of the plays that we were calling. How much of the, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to ask, mm -hmm. on that uh, throw where Josh threw it across mm -hmm. his body across the field, what do you say to him after, after that? Yeah, I mean, obviously I think that's a teachable moment for us right there. You know, uh, uh, I, again, it, it's, it really falls into us wanting to play smart, not conservative, you know, and, and right there. Um, you know, in a situation like that, we're getting chased. You're not sure what's backside. Um, you know, I think that's one we can learn from and either, you know, take off, run, throw it away, whatever we got to do next time to make sure we're not putting the ball in harm's way there. How much is he failing human nature in that instance? Because it's probably a throw he's 
attempted in practice. It just wasn't in 30 mile an hour wins. No, yeah, no doubt. I think, you know, and there's, there's a time and a place for, for certain things. And I think, you know, we've, we've seen him make a lot of throws back into the middle and stuff like that. But I think the, the coaching point there is, you know, there's, there's a few things that you, you focus on, you know, whether or not you can get your, your body weight into the throw to get enough on it, you know, where it is the field, are you seeing, can you see the whole picture? You know what I mean? So I think there's, there's definitely some things that go into it. And, um, you know, and I think all these guys, whether you're a first year player or a 20th year player, um, they're, they're all, they all want to be coached. You know, and they uh, uh, there's always things to learn, and and you know you you see it throughout time. You know, all these there's a bunch of veteran guys out there who've played 10, 15 years of the league at quarterback who still make mistakes and can learn from those mistakes. So you know, I think that's that's one where you know uh, Josh will never stop wanting to learn and never stop wanting to become a better football player mentally, and, and uh, I think that again we'll we'll never stop coaching him like that as well.